the first flash sale and it will be the show 23 is coming today so in this video i'm gonna go over everything you need to know about the flash shells and how you can make subs off of them so first off if you don't know what flash shells are well starting at 1 p.m pacific today for a couple hours we usually don't know how long they are usually we get four to five hours worth of flash shells there will be a new pack popping up in the market every hour at a discounted price so for example our choice packs when they pop up they're fifty thousand subs but we could see a choice pack come up and it'd be thirty thousand twenty five thousand subs somewhere along those lines and what this does is create a massive rush of people buying those cards and as you can imagine it brings down the market value of those cards quite tremendously for example if they put this home run derby pack that we have in the shop still on sale for 25,000 subs for just one hour. Well, people are going to rush to buy in Ryan Howard. 79,000 stubs we could see them dip down in price a little bit now this price right here people are already kind of selling off in anticipation of so we see some low prices already these base brown guys though 17,400 on the sell now those could get down to quick sell value at 10,000 stubs and what will happen is they'll bounce back up after that pack gets removed and the supply of all these cars being pushed into the market kind of dries up a little bit so we'd see this massive drop Maybe you buy Longos at 12,000, 11,000 stubs. Sometimes in a few hours, sometimes in a few days, kind of varies and depends. Maybe it gets back up to that 15, 16,000 range. You make a couple thousand stubs per card. So that is the kind of the basics of Flash Shell. New pack comes, floods the market with a ton of those cards. Prices drop on those cards. We buy those up at those discounted prices. And then over time, they'll start to rebound a little bit as people are unable to continue to earn those cards. Another example right here, WBC Mike Trout. He's already down to 100,000 stubs, which just yesterday he was 145,000 stubs just about. So he's already dropped about 40,000 stubs today in anticipation of the flash sale happening, which when we see this massive sell-off in anticipation, a lot of times we won't see as big of a dip as expected when the pack hits the store. But we get a WBC pack. We may not see Mike Trout drop a ton because it's kind of already been priced out to include that drop. And a lot of people are not going to be looking to buy him back relatively quickly. So something to keep in mind there. You've got to keep your eye on some of these cards. That being said, Trout could definitely drop some more. It depends on what those prices are. And it depends on what kind of packs that we get. We have a lot of pack options this year. Let's go over some of the possibilities that we could get in this flash shell. Now, I think the around the world packs are pretty much a lock that we'll be getting in this flash shell. And I'm thinking that all three will drop at the same time. So... Guys, to keep your eyes on, you can pause the video, throw these up on the app. You can favorite some of these cards, and that way you have them right there, ready to look at, ready to see if their price is dropping. So, some of the options that we have. Around the World Set 1, Mike Trout, Miguel Cabrera, and Roki Sasaki. Already down quite a bit on those. That is our rare round. Our base round of Bianco Park, Gio Urshela, Gene Segura, Gunguan, Gilagalo, and Pablo Lopez. Now, on those base round guys right there, they're about 11,000 stubs right now. For example, we got Gene Segura right here, 11,302 on the sell now. And he's been that price pretty consistently. So it's not really baking in any sort of dip from this flash sale possibly happening. If you can get these at 10,000 stubs, it ends up being risk free. So you don't really risk anything at that point pretty safe play but our upside is probably 12 to 13 thousand stubs on selling these because they just don't have a ton of value as it is you want to be super safe probably make a decent profit on these they get back up to 12k you're making profit pretty quickly just something to keep in mind there i don't really expect a massive drop in recovery bounce back for the base round around the world one let's take a look at around the world set two because we got a little bit more potential here edwin diaz kyle tucker and manny machado in the rare rounds all pretty low already. I mean, Manny Machado sell now looking at right now 55,000 stubs on the sell now is quite low. What that presents is some room to drop. We need to find cards that can go down. Again, those base round around the world one, they can't really go down anymore. Manny Machado at 55K can drop a lot more between that and his quick sell value. Don't expect them to get the quick sell, but he could feasibly drop some more. So that's one to keep your eye on. If suddenly there's a run on him, it's down to 30K. I like picking some up at that price point. One thing to know, though, if you pick them up as soon as that flash sell hits, a lot of times they can get a secondary dip. So the price will start here. It'll crash down. It'll start to recover a little bit and then almost drop again. So basically, a lot of people are trying to buy them, investing them. When that investor floor kind of goes away, 
you see that secondary dip happen usually a little bit later on into the pack being in the market during the sell. Doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. If that does happen, don't panic. Give it some time. These cards will all go back up in a 24 to 48 hour window. We should be in a pretty good spot. Uh, our base round, though, of the Around the World 2, these have a lot more room to drop. For example, Brandon Layton, 22450. Uh, sell now of 18. Hasn't really moved down yet, so people aren't pricing in a drop for these right now at all. Uh, Diego Castillo, Enrique Hernandez, Gary Sanchez, and Trace Thompson are our other base round Around the World set. Two guys. So, 18k for a 10,000 stub quick sell card if Brandon Layton's getting down to that 11 to 12,000 range I'm loving that pickup I'm not expecting him to get back to 22 but even if he gets back to 15 16 17 I can make a thousand to three thousand per card I'm really liking those profit margins of course we have around the world set three as well our rare round of Adam Wainwright JT Romuto and Julio Rodriguez lots of drops happening there on those rare round guys already and our base round these are currently in the XP reward path wheel spin, so they're not going to have as much room to drop. Glaber Torres, Hysan Kim, Jesus Lozardo, Rowdy Telez, and Xander Bogarts are our base round guys selling around 12,000 on the sell now, 14.5 or so on the buy now. So some room to bounce back there, but a little bit more similar to our set one guys. Set two of the around the world pack seems like the solid play right now, and I'm thinking that we're going to get all three of those at the same time. They'll throw one, two, and three up in the market at the same time. And so we should see some pretty significant dips. Our rare round guys of the one have the biggest chance to drop. Outside of that, I like our base round guys for here from set two. The second pack I feel pretty good about us getting is the welcome to the show pack. So welcome to the show one has Anthony Volpe, Corby Carroll, and Jordan Walker in the rare round. You can see a guy like Jordan Walker, 125K right now. Dipping a little bit, but was 136 a few days ago. Dipped yesterday. Hasn't really dipped so far today. So some room to drop on these rare round guys. Our base round guys. I mean, take a look at Hunter Brown. 39,000 stubs for a base round card. If they throw out these welcome to the show packs, we're going to see a massive drop here. Because at a 50k pack, I assume probably at minimum we're looking at 30k in the flash sale price for the pack, maybe even 25k. And with Hunter Brown at 47, you're getting guaranteed stubs. Everyone is going to be buying that pack and these and everyone is going to be taking Hunter Brown because he's the most expensive. So, we also have Tristan Casas, Ezekiel Tovar, Josh Young, Logan Omhop and Miguel Vargas and actually Josh Young's actually more expensive I'm seeing now so we get these welcome to the show one packs I expect some pretty substantial drops there and probably some rebound happening as just the demand for these cards has been there whether it's collections whether it's guy like guys like Hunter Brown and Josh Young that are just decent cards on their own the demand's been there for the obviously welcome to the show pack two we got la de la cruz francisco alvarez and grace rodriguez in the rare round and then our base round of brett Beatty, taj bradley curtis mead michael bush oswald peraza and indy rodriguez those are selling uh curtis meets 15k i'm not really sure what's happening there with him the rest of those selling around that 20 to 25 000 stubs on that base round so even at that if it's a 25 to 30k pack that is definitely worth the risk of a pack to open and possibly get the rare round and be looking pretty solid to break even even on the base round now what other packs could we be getting there's a lot of options this year we have the brand new home run derby packs that are in the game right now and the all-star game packs coming today could they throw those immediately in a flash shell happened one time last year but we got a new pack and they were in a flash shell the exact same day i wouldn't really count on that one though diamond duo guaranteed pack is probably a pretty safe option and the return of ball and out of control could happen as well pushing down our live series quite a bit other things to think about we had those wbc and captain pre-order packs things like the david wright and trevor hoppin that people love and then our 90 overall wbc guys those were in those pre-order packs they could throw those back out as some of those prices are getting a little high and this could be their way to kind of help control the market on those so that's what we are working with today again Keep an eye on what packs drop. Identify the cards that are in those packs when they get released in the market. Keep an eye on those cards in the marketplace to see them start to dip. Try to buy them at their lowest point. It'll be impossible to time the market perfectly, but try to get it at those lowest point. In the most part, avoid the packs. There may be a couple of exceptions. And of course, if you want to have fun, rip the packs. We'll be holding the cards that we buy anywhere between a couple hours to a couple days. Sometimes, especially early on, I'll reflip those cards 
an hour two hours after the flash sale happens if i can make a thousand two thousand subs per and i can reinvest those subs into later flash sales so just kind of depending upon everything if you want to see what i'm doing live while the flash sales are happening i will be live on twitch you can find the link to that down in the description below and as always if you got any questions be sure to hit me up in the comment section below until next time i'll catch y'all around